Are you there? Oh, I'm. Are you there? I'm legally obligated to tell you that you're being recorded. <laughs> you ready? Permission to use my likeness. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Felicity Yarn Studio channel. My name is Zoe, and we are joined today by Naomi, the Yarn Curator. So yeah, we were just recording our steak along video where we both just cut the steaks on our shawls and we were both planning on recording today. So we just decided to kill two birds with one stone and yes. do a little joint podcast here. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah, we've been on the phone for like an hour and a half or two hours now, I think. And it was like, yes. let's just record and... Bite the bullet. Yeah. So um, let's see up front. I guess I'll just go ahead and mention the steak along is running through the end of the year. You can enter by using the hashtag steak along 2020 on Instagram or join us in the Ravelry group. We have just one thread for cheddar cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> For chatter and finished objects. Um, I'll be announcing the winner of the 400 subscriber giveaway at the end of this video. And Yay. anything from you, Naomi? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can think of off the top of my head. So nothing that I can think of, at least. Yeah. So I think we're both going to do a little show and tell on what we've been working on, some Christmas presents that we have been knitting. Um, I'll let you go first since you're the guest well, here, unless you want to sip your tea. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It needs to cool down. Mm -hmm. I've been gently sipping so I don't burn my tongue. Yeah. So we are doing a little gift exchange at my work this year. And tomorrow, Tuesday, the 15th of December, is the actual Christmas party. Don't worry. It'll be socially distanced. Masks uh, on. Masks. So we meet in our meeting room, which has a capacity for 100 people. And we each kind of take a corner. And we all sit in the four corners of the room. Um, as how will be the Christmas party. <laughs> Super festive. Yeah. Um, so I decided to knit everyone hats this year. So this is my first one. This is the, um, the Twister hat by mm -hmm. Fiber and Folk is the name. It's a free online pattern. It's cute. And yeah, it's got this twisted pearl stitch that runs around. It is knit out of some very deep vintage stash, Madeline Tosh in the Taurus colorway. Mm -hmm. um, so what's that, 2017? I think that might be 20, I, it's the year before the crystals and gem, or the semi-precious collection that yeah. I made my blanket out of. That was the club the year before that. Maybe 2016. I, it might be, I don't remember though. I mean. I think it's 2016. I think so too. So yeah, they did a um, Zodiac theme for that year so yeah i knit this on size 10 and a half needles the pattern calls for switching to a bigger needle for the hat portion but i just didn't do that um because i figured it wasn't going to make a huge difference and the person i'm making this for actually has like a really small head and so <laughs> i've been looking at it like god i hope it's not too big i don't um, think it'll be too big yeah so it fits me comfortably so it might be a little big on her but whatever uh, you can pass it yeah. along <laughs> I know she'll wear it though because she hates cold weather and like mm. and in like the 60s here she's like bundled up in like the big puffy jacket and hats and gloves so yeah <laughs> that's so funny to me I mean I She's from Puerto Rico, so it's like she's not used to the cold weather. Huh? I get it. I mean, I remember when we moved from Florida to North Carolina, and it was like we had zero winter clothes, and we moved in the middle of January. <laughs> and it was like sweaters, and that was about it. Yeah. 
So yeah, this is gift one. So this is a second one. This is for my boss who is like very crunchy, very like, I said crunchy the other day and Jason was like, what is that? I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> You've never heard that expression before? I guess not. <laughs> well, yeah, my boss is super crunchy granola type, but also mixed with hipster. Like the other day she was wearing, it was an awful color, but it was like <laughs> that like pucy green yellow. Yeah. But it looked like it had been machine knit and then it had like stitching where someone had gone over to make it look like the edge. Anyways, it was very Grateful Dead looking. That's what I'll, I'll describe it as. So she got Nora. <laughs> no, I like that. Like Nora is hit or miss for me. Yeah. Um, but that's, I like those colors. So yeah, this is also vintage deep stash, super bulky Noro. I think it's a mix of like merino and angora and silk and one of their kind of kitchen sink blends in terms of all the different fibers in it. Aren't they all though? Like yeah, it's true, true. <laughs> so I omitted the 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 pearl stitch twirl because I feel like the Noro has enough going on in it that yeah. it's one of those things where it's like understated on the pattern is probably yeah. better. So yeah, I knit it exactly the same just out of the Noro. And I have a whole nother ball or two of this. I might make one for myself because it's cute. No, I, there's like three, I've seen like three or four Noro colorways where I'm like, I actually like the way that those look, but for the most part, they're a little bit too jazzy for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my word lately. But. Yeah, I really like it till about like this little part here, it starts to lose me and feels a little discordant from here. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's the top of the hat. You yeah. can't really see it. And then I have another hat because everyone gets hats. Is <laughs> your coworkers are knit worthy? Kind of. <laughs> I think. Three out of four are knit worthy. Mm. However, you can't not knit for the the four. Yes. And <laughs> so one of mine who she's getting. <laughs> Let me grab my sock blockers while you adjust. While I redress myself. <laughs> So my coworker Sue, who is the knitworthiest out of the knitworthy, she's gonna get the hat that I made when we did the collaboration with. Oh, that's cute. Uh, yeah. Like, see, and this is one of her favorite colors. So mm. that one was already done. And so this one is for my last coworker. This is the. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this because I think it's like a Swedish or Norwegian word. The mm -hmm. Tilda hat by Inist Sang. It's another free pattern. I basically, I went on Ravelry and worked for free and bulky weight hat patterns. Yeah. And it's really pretty though. It's got these cables. No, I like that for just a basic kind of cabled hat. Yeah. Um, and I ran out of yarn with it. And so originally I had gone to, this is from Michael's. I think it's just loops and threads. It's a wool acrylic blend. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have to say, I have not enjoyed knitting this hat because the yarn doesn't have a lot of give to it. So right. between that and then being the bulky, like my hands are really cramping yeah. while making it. So that has not been fun, but, um, yeah, I ran out of this ball of yarn, and I had originally gone to Michael's, and I bought two balls of bulky in different colors, and I was like, oh, I can totally knock two hats out of those bulky. No, no, I didn't even get one out of it, and so yeah. I went there in the morning, and I could not find another ball of this color, mm -hmm. and I was, like, standing in the aisle, muttering to myself, like, mm -hmm. and then... Then I finally found another ball. And so I'll 
<laughs> all is well with the world. And I only need to do like six more rows is like the yeah. fun part. Like it's almost done. I just You're need to have darn for it. Yeah. You'll have plenty of leftovers to make something stuffing with. out of. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is my Christmas gift knitting. If you want to share some of your gift knitting. So I have been making socks for my nieces and, well, I guess I should show those first, huh? <laughs> so these won't fit on my sock blockers, but I finished the first pair of mermaid socks. Those are cute. The, yeah, they're called... Part of Your World, this yarn blows out every time I pull it up here. Part of Your World by Nicole Woolfield, Nicole Bracey of Woolfield Studios. She was one of my fiber share partners mm -hmm. many years ago. Um, but these are for my oldest niece. I just made her some little shorty socks. That's where I was on the last episode. I did them top down. So I actually wound up making her the medium size and the pattern. Um, I have actually knit her socks. This is the third time that I've knit these because the last two times they have come out too small. So I just decided to go on ahead and go up a needle size and a pattern size. Really, really happy to have these done. Um, <laughs> and this is knit. <laughs> this, these are knit out of some of my own hand dyed yarn. Um, in the Stardust colorway. So I've got a couple schemes of that in the shop right now. Um, yeah, so pair number one. Um, this is pair number two, and they're my pumpkin splice colorway. So yeah, it's on a tweed base, so you can see the little white tweed nips and the crunching leaves mini colorway there. And yeah, I originally started knitting these for myself, but I decided I'm going to send them along as a Christmas present this year. So they're just a 72 stitch vanilla sock. I had originally started to do the Hermione's Everyday pattern on them, but that texture was just getting lost in the tweed and the color. So I was like, I'm just going to go vanilla on them. These also had a couple of rough starts if I remember correctly I remember. Um, yeah so I I don't know what happened with the pooling why it's like really even up here and then they like get into longer sections of pooling but they kind of match so they look self-striking-esque they might have something with the heel gusset maybe or well I didn't afterthought heel so I didn't really interrupt the yarn um I don't know. I think it has more to do with how it's laid out in the pan. Mm. So I actually have some of this in the shop, but they're not quite the same. Those skeins were just laid out differently in the pan, so they probably won't knit up the same. But if I remember correctly, because they didn't get dyed right, I've marked them down if anybody's on the hunt for that. <laughs> so then let's see. It, this is a very sock heavy. I think I said that last week. So this is just a continuation. Mine's hats, hats, hats. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I finished the first mermaid socks and my other niece also wanted some mermaid socks for Christmas. So I've started this pair in another one of my colorways called Little Sister. It's cute. And yeah, I'm at the point where I'm going to put in a piece of yarn for the heel, and I'll come back and do an afterthought heel on these. Also, ah, um, knitting for little feet. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'm doing the smallest pattern size, which is supposed to be for, like, an adult small. Um, I think when I made these socks for me years ago, the sock yarn that I used at the time was a heavier weight fingering, and that's why... These are coming out a little bit smaller, but anyway, yeah, I'm really hoping to like knock these out in the next day or two. They shouldn't take terribly long for little six-year-old feet. <laughs> and finally, not finally, finally for socks at least. <laughs> 
I got these socks back on track. Mm, I these like are those. the hand spun socks. And these the are is hand spun by Naomi. <laughs> Curated yarn for me here. <laughs> so yes, this is a skein of hand spun that Naomi gifted me a few years ago for Christmas. Finally getting around to using it. Yeah. Um, and I did these toe up. I don't often do toe up socks. So I got to practice my German short row heel on these. I really liked how it turned out. I will say it was kind of a pain in the butt because I know you haven't done a German short row heel. So the way it works is when you're working the first half of the heel, you're making short rows. And then when you start working back to like increase back out, you knit the short yeah, you knit the like pulled stitch and then you knit another one, but when you turn you like make the the pulled stitch back into a short row twisted stitch. Am I making any sense? No. Anyway, it was a pain in the butt on some of them because you have to like yank that stitch twice in a row after you knit it. So it was quite bulky in some places, but I made it through. They fit really well on my foot. <laughs> somebody, somebody has been dropping some hints that they might like these socks. <laughs> I don't I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. So um, yeah, I'm at the point where this is all I have left. So I think I'm just gonna do some cuffs and call it a day. Yeah. Dang. I was about to say, just send me the leftovers, but. There's not going to be any leftovers. No. Yet. Um, I don't know. You might get them. You might not. We'll see. <laughs> I've got plenty of socks and I've got plenty more socks that I want to make myself. So. And we have a standing agreement that if I spin yarn, you'll knit it into socks for me. Yes. For those of you who new I do not enjoy knitting socks but I do enjoy wearing hand knit socks I like both so yes. <laughs> I've been knitting a lot of socks this year I feel yeah. like it a lot of socks for other people too like I normally make them for myself but um oh yeah I have one other I knit a hat for someone for Christmas I'm not gonna give too much away there so hopefully they're not watching I doubt it but um, I think I think when they watch he takes a nap You're giving too much away <laughs> so anyway this is the scrappy smarled hat by Tiff Nealon and you hold either two, two strands of DK and a fingering weight or you Here's what I don't understand about this pattern. You can either make it at like a, a light bulky weight or an Aran weight, but the directions are exactly the same. Like the stitch counts all the same. <laughs> yeah. So, so I held, I, I think I held at least one strand of DK and then like I alternated two or three strands of fingering throughout. I think I held two strands of fingering with it throughout. I like it. I do too. I want to make myself one of these. Um, it works up super quick. It's on like size 11 needles for the body of the hat. I did go down on my ribbing <laughs> like the pattern suggested. <laughs> so yes. Look that... at you following rules. Not rules. Suggestions. So what else have you been working on? So I have a, another finished object of sorts and it, it kind of counts as sewing. Ooh. So if anyone remembers my Novelli that my dear husband felted, uh, it got turned into a pillow and it's kind nice. of wonky and kind of lumpy, but I figure that will sort itself out oh. use. So I just, uh, last weekend, I was prepping my 
shawl that I can't remember the name of that we've said. Woodlark. Yes, I was prepping the steak on my woodlark, and while I had the sewing machine out, I figured I would go ahead and sew this. So it looks good. Yeah. So I just sewed the bottom together, and it actually where the seam is. Yeah. Matches up really nicely. I was thinking you should make that the top part. I think I will. So I think it looks nicer. And so then, yeah, I actually hand just hand sewed the neckline in together because I used that as my stuffing hole. I still got mm-hmm. one end to sew in. But yeah, you my stuffed it. hook. Yeah. And yeah. So now I have a pillow. No belly and pillow. Um, Indeed. And yeah, so I think I already said we were doing our lewd. Uh, I think I mentioned at the top how we had just recorded our steaking video, so I think we'll both just kind of segue into that. Yeah, so we both obviously just cut open our woodlark shawls. Um, I'll just say you should probably just go back and watch that video on Naomi's channel um, to kind of hear about how that whole process went. Yes. I do have one area where I think, I don't think it's tragedy, but the more it's, it's just sitting here, the more it's coming undone. It's but you are supposed to like finish the edge. So yeah, that's a minor misadventure of the snips. <laughs> That's that sounds kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is this is mine. It was really gratifying though to be able to hold the shawl out. And yes, yes. So yeah. mine knit out of Bisha's de Bouche and some holst. And yours is knit out of? Um, the, like, gray color is one that I dyed up. It's, I, I don't even think I wrote down the recipe, so it might be a one-of-a-kind. And then the, like, it's a really dark navy blue-green is Retro Zaria, um, her collaboration with Lobby and May, and the Winterfell colorway, so... Yes, I'm I'm super happy to have this shawl open and yes, like it's this close to being done. Um, yeah, this is definitely a, a product knit, not a process knit. It was both for me. I enjoyed the process of knitting it, except for at the end when it just got really long. It was very long at the end, um, but it's a really beautiful shawl. Um, yes. Like I said in the other video, I think color, this might be, I might need a break from color work shawls after this for a bit. Enough time to forget. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. And then. And then we've been like, working on blankets a lot lately. Yes. I really want to dive like into mine head first, but I'm trying to get Christmas and obligation stuff out of the way. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and pull mine out. So I started the crochet version of the Northeasterly blanket. Um, so the Northeasterly is originally by um, Skinanigans, and then Harbor Crochet adapted that into a crochet pattern. And let's see. So I've started adding the third column here, and nice. I'm like, halfway or so through the second column and then I think this is about how long I want it so probably just got lipstick all over it <laughs> it is can't really see but it's it's just longer than my my bag just fell over <laughs> it's just longer than my wingspan at this point um, but the nice thing is if I want it any longer I can just come back to this end and keep adding on to it yeah, a little bit that's more. That's one of the things that I like about crochet is it's a little bit more free form in a way. You can just kind of pick up from an area and start working. Um, but I, it's what? 
more modular. Yeah. Well, it's just a little, you're not restricted to stitches on the needle. So you can, you know, yeah. like if I just wanted to start right here, I could, um, or I don't know. That being said, since I'm adding each strip as I go, I mean, that's how the pattern works, but I thought about ripping the second column out and redoing it because I thought the way that I had joined these first few stitches was contributing to this little like curve that's happening here. But once I added the next column, it seemed to kind of work itself out. I do think I kind of messed up this first join, but I'm not going to stress it too much. I think once you add a few more, it's going to kind of once you add and lock it and all that good stuff, it'll be fine. Yeah. So I'm just kind of going along every couple of colors. I'll lay it out on the couch so I can get a good idea of how things are joining up color wise. And I'll pick out two or three colors and then I'll add them. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these colors. <laughs> I'm using scraps and minis and leftovers and um, yeah, I've been using, I've already caked up. This was one of my spectrum minis from the advent calendar that I got from them. So yeah, these are some of the minis from the advent calendar. They're quite bright on screen. Mm -hmm. I look, you're under a black light. <laughs> They're not that bright in person. I know you don't believe me. Um, <laughs> So these will probably go in the blanket and then I've pulled a couple of full size skeins from my stash, like the one off skeins that have been there for years that I don't know what I'm going to do with because um, this thing is eating yarn mm -hmm. very quickly. And yeah, I think I'm really like ready to just kind of get into that for a while. Feel you on that. But yeah, it's fingering weight held double for like a DK weight. So I've been using some DK scraps as well. Ooh. Yes. So this is uh -huh. a scrappy blanket. <laughs> also fingering weight held double. So yeah, this is the Bits and Bobs blanket by K of the Bakery Bears. So I've been, originally I was thinking it was going to be a fade but I kind of abandoned that and have decided to be less controlled and more free form. So I, the only thing I'm doing is just trying to fade the colors from one to the next. Yeah. So it seems a little less stripey. So I think when I showed it off last, I was around here. Mm -hmm. so, so this is all I want to work on though right now. And just I feel you been soothing in the evenings and just, I think it's a winter thing also. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I find that through winter, I usually want to work on blankets for whatever reason. So right now I'm knitting with this like random skein. <laughs> what is that? This is the brand La Jola or La Jola, uh -huh. you pronounce it. Yeah. I'm going to do our Cuban ancestors dirty with that pronunciation. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> and... Yeah, it's got, like, very much, like, UF vibes. I think the colorway is called Sangria. Mm. It's, like, blue and orange, so I'm just holding it with something to tone that orange down. Yeah. Because it's very... It doesn't orange. look like that at all when it's knitted up, though. No. So, yeah, I'm enjoying this. And the other night, I... So, the day I did the steak that I put it into the shawl and I did this pillow I'm pretty sure I broke my sewing machine and Whoops. after I, after I walked away from the carnage of my bobbin I was like I'm just going and working on my blanket <laughs> <laughs> yeah I keep like rewarding myself I'm like okay when I do the toes on these socks I can sit down and do like three colors on my blanket or like you know, when I finish this hat, I can do another color. But my problem with this is with with getting all of the minis, like, not really a problem. But my problem with advent calendars and minis is I have to wind them all up. Yeah. And it's just like, 
like oh binding. It is. And I mean, okay, it's only a mini, but like, I yeah, don't know. but multiply that by 24. By 24, and then I've, like I said, I've got a couple of like Koigu 50 grams that I'm throwing in there. I've got a couple full size skeins, so I don't know. I also just kind of feel like I'm not trying to be too control freaky because I'm kind of already picked out palettes. And I actually went through and separated like all the yellows into one gallon size bag, all the greens into another. So I'm, I'm just kind of like pick and choose, green, but I colored, but I separated all colors. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to like see them all in one place. Not mm-hmm. that like I'm planning out each color as I go. I'm just it's not that. It's organized. It's not control freak. <laughs> Uh, yes. So I think that is it for making. All right. So we are going to move on to the Ask Me Anything that I did for the 400 subscriber giveaway. Um, asked you guys to leave a question in order to be entered to win this little mini set and the Ooh. stitch marker. That's cute. Yeah, so I thought it would be fun to have Naomi here to act as moderator (laughs) of sorts. Do my best Leslie Stahl 60 minutes impersonation. (laughs) Showing my nerdiness. Yeah, so we'll get to the winner um, after we've answered some questions. So question one. Are there any natural fibers besides cotton that are hypoallergenic? I'm allergic to wool, but I haven't found any cottons that don't split horribly. Um, I believe that bamboo and like hemp or linen are probably okay. I mean, I'm by no means a like fiber expert, but I think any, like, natural plant-based fibers like that would be good. I don't know if you know of anything else. I would agree with that, yeah. I yeah. think looking Maybe for... silk. Yeah. Anything that doesn't come from an animal should be... Mm-hmm. Silk technically would come from an... Sort of come from yeah. an animal. <laughs> yes, it's an animal byproduct. Yes. And depending on how they harvest it. Right. Depends but... on... Yeah, Um, I know I knit with, not to make this too long, because I don't want to jump in on all your answers, but last year I knit with a blend from Knit One Crochet 2 is the brand, Mm. and they're Daisy Base, and that was a linen flax silk blend, and it really set up with blocking. Mm -hmm. I thought linen was flax. It is. (laughs) No. Hemp. It had hemp in it. Okay. Linen and flax, yes, are the same thing. Yeah, I still need to knit with some linen. I'm not actually finished anything with linen. (laughs) So the next question is, how did you decide to use the paintings as your Advent inspiration? (laughs) Um, well, (laughs) I threw a bunch of ideas at Naomi. And she was was like, you should just do impressionist paintings. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I want to do this. I want to do that. And after like three days of constant text messaging of themes and things, I was like, I'm just going to do the impressionist paintings. Um. You're welcome, everyone. (laughs) But yeah, I'm really glad that I did. It turned out really beautifully um I've gotten a lot of really really lovely feedback from people um so it's probably my favorite calendar that you've done so far I agree with that we've talked about in the past just how that I think that style of painting lends itself well to yarn dyeing yes so um I think yeah it's just a really nice palette overall um that's really wearable and accessible so 
I might branch off into something similar in a later question that's coming up, but. So next up is from our adopted sister, Emily. <laughs> Top five favorite sock patterns to knit. Um, so I'm super boring and I knit like 90% vanilla socks. <laughs> Uh, but I love to do self-striping yarn, so to me that that almost counts as a pattern. Um, <laughs> I've recently discovered <laughs> you hushed <laughs> vanilla socks and self-striping. It's almost a pattern. <laughs> um, I've recently discovered DK weight socks, so I think those are really fun and quick. Oh, and I wanted. I want to try some color work socks. I've not actually knit a color work pair, even though I own like four or five patterns. I just need to sit down and try some. Um, but yeah, I can't think of five patterns because again, I mostly just knit vanilla socks. Well, you I'm boring. did for my knees every day. I did, and I liked that. I mean, it was a really simple texture. Um, probably the Helen Stewart socks that I knit earlier this year was the most like non-vanilla sock knitting that I've done. Um, I also want to do a pair of cabled socks at some point here in the future. So get on it, girl. So the next one I think is asking if hand dyed yarns are color proof or not. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that either. Um, so if they're hand dyed by like an indie dyer, for the most part, yes. Um, everyone puts on their label, you know, may wash with the first, may bleed with the first wash. Um, basically as a disclaimer, because it could, but if the dyer knows what they're doing and they've done everything right, the dye should set and shouldn't bleed. Um, there's a, I think there's another question about yarn dyeing, which I don't know how technical and like in depth I'm gonna get, but well, that one is what are your favorite colors to use when dyeing yarn? So I love neons, I love pastels. Um, shocker, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really love dyeing. Here's the thing, I like knitting with neutrals and pastels, but I like to dye the really rich colors because I think that's really satisfying to see like go onto the yarn. So there's a real push pull there. <laughs> um, but I do have like three or four colors that I pretty much always speckle with, like they go on almost everything, so. Mm -hmm. And then, Oh, here's another one. What are your favorite and least favorite things about dyeing yarn? Okay, so I'll go least favorite first. I hate the like cleanup after the fact, <laughs> the paperwork and like taxes and all that jazz and like um, the like tediousness of listing everything on Etsy, all the not fun stuff, clearly, I mean, but my favorite is just, for me, dyeing is a process art. So I think that's what I enjoy the most about it. Like I like all of the steps from the soaking the yarn to putting the color on and the rinsing and the like waiting to see that final product when it's done. Cause it always changes a little bit from what's in the pan to when it's dry. So. My favorite part is receiving 50 text messages of photos of all the yarn. <laughs> yes, <laughs> color consultant. <laughs> um, so another one about spinning mm. is I love hand spun, but spinning looks very intimidating. What are your biggest tips for beginners? Well, I still consider myself a beginner. Um, I've only been spinning for a little bit over a year, but you know, the, I think the first thing is just try it, you know, like, and that's with anything. I feel like the philosophy should just be jump in head first and learn how to do it. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but 
Um, as far as spinning goes, at least on a wheel, that's the only experience I've had is, you know, go slowly and just accept that the first few things that you're going to spin are probably going to be art yarn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I really found um, spinning with the bat that you made me was a lot easier to spin than like slippery fibers at first. Um, I still, even though I like spinning the sock yarn, the superwash um, nylon blends can still be a little slippery for me sometimes. Um, cross threading your wire, mm -hmm. if you want to spin really thin, was like a moment for me. <laughs> I don't know if you have any, because you have more spinning experience than I do. I think for me, one of the biggest tips I got that was the most helpful was like, Relieve, re loosen the grip on your drafting mm -hmm. hand uh, because, like, I used to like hold on with a death grip. Right. And if you just relax your hands while you're doing it, it seems counterintuitive that right. it's like you're releasing some control. But yeah, loosen your hands as you go, and you can really spinning is a really tactile experience, and a lot yeah. of it goes based on feel. And so if you loosen your hands, you can kind of feel what's going on a little bit easier, if that makes sense. I'd agree sense. with that, too. Yeah, I don't know. We could all, we could probably talk for, like, hours on spinning when techniques. And be okay wasting fiber when you first. Yeah. I probably wasted, uh, like, a pound of fiber in the process of learning to spin. I did that. Yeah, yeah I intentionally bought some fiber that I was okay with it being whatever it wound up being. Art yarn. Yes. How did you make that gorgeous piece on the wall that's behind you? So this is my uh, beekeeper's quilt, or they're also known as hexapuffs. Um, I was originally making a quilt, or I had wanted to make a quilt. Um, I used like four or five different uh, Knit Picks Chroma fingering weight yarns, um, and they're the um, like gradient colorways. So a lot of them were similar in colors, and then I just obsessively laid out the hexapuffs and like until I got them in an order. I did line them each with the like natural and dyed colorway and crocheted around them. And then I think I sewed them together. Um, I do have a video up about hanging them, how I like go through that process since we moved recently and I had to rehang them. Um, but I have like a couple gallon bags of leftovers that I said I was gonna yeah, make was... another one with. <laughs> do it. I was supposed to get a wall hanging for my office. I'll send you bags of hexapuffs. Send me a bag of hexapuffs and some socks. I, I can do that. Because, <laughs> yeah, they're just sitting in a tub now, and I don't know that I'll ever do anything with them. But So the next one is, what has been your favorite knit or crochet craft project so far? So my all-time favorite right now is... I showed this off on my advent video, but this is the shawl that I made with my advent calendar from a few years ago from Artemis Yarns. This is the dotted ray shawl. This is the second dotted rays that I've made. Um, so I think somebody else asked what yeah, patterns I would make again. Um, I would knit this a third time. I absolutely love dotted rays. Um, it's, it's engaging, but mindless at the same time. It's, it's a fun. great shape for wearing, I feel like. Like, you can wear it this way or over your shoulders. Um, it's great for fading or all it's one color. I don't know. This is probably, like, my all-time favorite. Um, for my favorite, like, sweater that I've ever made is probably my Sunset Highway. Um, I just, that fits really well. And... That's what, ironically, it's one of the first, like, sweaters that I've really made, and it fits the best out of all of them, so I... 
funny because you pushed back on making that for a I while. know. I hate it. I didn't hate it, but I was like, eh, this pattern's meh. Like, I didn't get the hype for the longest time. And then I finally made one, and now it's like my favorite sweater. I would make another Sunset Highway. So, what are your favorite cast ons and bind offs for different types of projects? Um, I'm lazy. I use the long tail cast on for like 90% of my cast ons. <laughs> um, I use the German twisted cast on if I want a very stretchy um, cast on. Uh, yeah, that's about it for cast ons. And then Bind offs, I, for, as far as stretchy goes, you showed me the lace bind mm -hmm. off last year, but that was a little too stretchy for me. I don't yeah. even remember how you do it now. You essentially, I think you knit one, I don't know, there's a way you twist the stitches or something. Yeah. Knit through the black loop of pearls, and then you knit or you knit through the front, you knit through the back loop on knits and knit two together. And then you knit through the front loop on purling and then you do the slip over. Mm -hmm. I'd have to watch a video on it again. Yeah, I don't or remember. Split from muscle memory. Yeah. Um, I did the Jenny's stretchy bind off on a pair of socks recently and I enjoyed that. Um, I know someone suggested to me not too long ago the Russian bind off for a stretchy bind off, which seems similar, um, but I, I don't remember the mechanics of it. I haven't actually used it on anything yet. My go-to bind off now is Lori's twisty bind off, mm. which is what I use being like ribbed. It's really, it's neat and stretchy. I will say I have... I might be a convert to the tubular bind off in certain situations. I do like an eye cord bind off for things as well. That's not very stretchy necessarily, but like on really a shawl, I think it's really pretty. <laughs> what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? That YouTube money. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, well, I really wanted a way to document my making process. Um, I do try to keep up with my Ravelry page, but you know, it's just easier to sit down and kind of make this like video journal of what I'm working on at the moment. Uh, I know you kind of felt the same way. And, you know, it's also just fun to meet people and reach a new audience and you know make some new yarny fiber friends so yeah I don't know it's fun it's fun also to learn like the video editing aspect mm -hmm. of it all that's kind of its own craft in a way um, that I think a lot of people don't realize you know it does take a little bit of work on that end so okay so these ones are asking about natural dyeing mm -hmm. and the types of natural dyeing you've done Okay, so I'm by no means a natural dye <laughs> expert. Um, I just kind of occasionally will dabble in it if I've got extra foodstuffs around the kitchen that work for dyeing or, I don't know. Let me think about how I want to say this. Natural dyeing takes a lot more, not a lot, it's a lot longer of a process. It's not like I can just pop some stuff on the stove and be done with it in two hours. It's like a days long process. Um, but I've died with avocado pits. I've died with pecan husks. Let me backtrack. Avocado pits I've gotten like a light peachy, not peachy, it's more of a pinky skin tone kind of color, but skin tone's relative. So maybe that's not a good descriptor. Um, it's a light pink. They were going a little brown, and I have found that if you add baking soda to your avocado dye stock, it will turn things more pink instead of brown. Um, pecan husks, these were like pre-roasted or already roasted pecan husks. Those also went kind of a pinky brown color. Black beans 
will give you a bluish gray. You can sometimes get really blues or really dark grays. And I know you can collect flowers, like some people will collect all the daffodil blooms um, in springtime to get like pale yellows. You can dye with berries, you can dye with lichen and bark. You can dye with all kinds of things. I actually have a book and it's got like hundreds of plants that you can dye with. Um, I would suggest looking for a natural or plant-based dyeing book as a reference if you're interested in it's a whole nother world <laughs> so what got you started dyeing yarn so <laughs> here's another life story um well like everybody else a few years ago i kind of fell in love with speckled yarn and i think i talked about this when i started beading i just kind of need to reverse engineer things and figure out <laughs> how to do them and make them myself. Uh, so I really wanted to learn how to do it. And I, you know, did a lot of research, um, watched a lot of YouTube videos, read a lot of Ravelry forums about yarn dyeing, and kind of figured out what methods worked best for me um, so that I could start dyeing things that I wanted that I didn't necessarily see out there available for purchase. Um, and yeah, I was also at a point in my life where I have a graphic design background, but I was working in a customer service job at a call center and that project was discontinued. So it was just kind of a nice segue into getting back into something creative and a little bit more fulfilling. Um, yeah, so that's I'm really lucky to have a partner who financially <laughs> supports me and allows me to to have fun <laughs> so another question when did you start working with yarn and who inspired you <laughs> i talked about this i think way back on my first episode um i think it was like what 2006 or 2007 when you were living with me and jason mm -hmm. so naomi's younger than me and I had wanted, I had bought myself one of those learn how to crochet kits and I messed with it for like one night and I, it didn't make sense. So fast forward a few years later, we're living together. Naomi knew how to knit and I was like, all right, just teach me. I'm like ready to get into it. I, this is while I was in school for graphic design. So I kind of wanted something to come home and decompress before we learned in reverse or <laughs> Naomi figured it out first. Yes. Then she taught me. I taught one of our aunts who taught a couple of our other aunts. And then we got mom last year. So. We jointly taught our mom. Yes. <laughs> she did a lot of like loom knitting before she yeah. got into needle knitting. You're welcome once again. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite item to knit and gift? to someone hats and socks <laughs> super yeah. simple and everybody wears them so what are your plans for christmas even though i've already heard these from our chat <laughs> earlier um so jason my husband took about a week week and a half off of work um we are going to be doing some house projects um we're going to take a very short trip for a day or two to go see some family, some social distance familying. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, it's gonna be kind of a low key Christmas, which I gotta say, I personally really enjoyed a low key Thanksgiving and not traveling. Um, it was really nice to just be chill for the day. Home. We always travel for Thanksgiving and Christmas and I, I'm just like, I'm really enjoying staying in my house <laughs> how did you learn to bead stitch markers youtube <laughs> um i just googled some terms um i found some stuff on pinterest uh watched a lot of youtube videos not even a lot i think i watched two or three videos and it was kind of like once it clicked Click. it clicked i'll try to leave links um if you're like a new 
if you're interested in, you know, beading, I would say try Googling brick stitch or payout stitch with the Mayuki Delica beads. I think that's what they're called. I know it's really obscure, but once you know the right things to search for, the information is there. And then, oh, here's one. Real or artificial Christmas tree? <laughs> with team um, I would love to have a real tree, and I do want a real tree, but we have cats, so I usually just put up a three-foot artificial tree. Um, we used to have a bigger one, a bigger artificial tree, and they, the cats didn't bother that, but it was a little scraggly looking. It was secondhand, so we just simplified things and... Confession time, I haven't put up one Christmas decoration yet this year. Dang. I know, I'm just, it is what it is. Dang, I even got my Christmas decorations up. And I'm not back for Christmas. I'm just not here for the, like, extra work this year. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Do you ever make tube socks? Um, no, I actually had to like look up what these were because I was like, aren't, aren't these considered tube socks? But I think these are just, they're knit a certain way, but without a heel. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to try these because, um, yeah, putting in heels, it's not hard. It's just like when you're done knitting a sock, you're like, I don't really want to go back and put in the heel now. Um. So, yeah, I'm going to have to try one of those. And uh, I'm, uh, where did the name of your podcast come from? Uh, so, Flash. do what? Flash the biz. So, when I was brainstorming names for, you know, dyeing yarn, um, I don't know, a lot of books that I was listening to at the time, the word felicity just kept coming up and it means happiness. Yarn makes me really happy. Um, I will admit, I'm not crazy about the name, but <laughs> I'm kind of brainstorming a rebrand at some point. Uh, if she is. <laughs> this is another thing that gets text about nonstop. Um, but I, the right thing hasn't come to me yet so when it does it'll probably yeah be across the board like yarn and channel mm -hmm. so I don't and know when that's gonna happen <laughs> last but not least which is good because my iPad's about to die <laughs> is it harder to dye cotton yarns okay here's where the big like yarn dyeing lesson will come in um I don't think it's harder but it's like a, it uses a different kind of dye. So wool is an animal protein fiber, same as like alpaca, silk, mohair. That uses acid dyes, which there's not acid in the dye, but you need citric acid to adhere the dye to the yarn. You need acid and heat. My understanding with cotton and other like cellulose fibers that are plant-based, um, they use fiber reactive dyes, which don't use heat. Um, if you use heat with those with wool, it'll, the dye isn't as effective, I think. Um, not a huge expert on that either. I mainly just stick to the wool. Um, another reason why acid dyes work really good with the superwash yarn is the superwash yarn, the scales have been removed from the outside of the hair shaft. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the dye penetrates really quickly and crisply, and that's why like speckles work really well on superwash yarn. Aren't um, plant-based dyes also called Procyon dyes? For, yeah, for plant-based fibers. Um, so, yeah, and then, like, going back to natural dyeing, then you have the whole world of mordants also. So there's a lot to understand about dyeing. Um, actually, like, 
doing just commercial acid dyes are really the most simple and in a way more reliable, at least the natural dyes. I think the Procyon fiber reactive, I don't know. I don't know a lot of them, but I do know that's what you use when you tie dye t-shirts. So, mm. so yeah, so if I'm dying in the kitchen and I get the acid dye on my t-shirt, it's not actually going to dye my shirt because I don't have the acid and it's not getting exposed to heat. So, I mean, yeah, some things will like stain, but it's not going to die. There's a difference between dyeing and staining as well. Yes, because the stain sits on the surface of the fabric. It does not sink in. Anyway, <laughs> we're getting, this would go on for forever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess that leaves us with announcing the winner. If you've sat through all of this jibber jabber. <laughs> Drum roll. Um, I did do a little comment picker thing, and the winner is Gemma B of Gemma B Makes. So, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, Gemma. Um, just get in touch with me probably on Instagram or Ravelry. You can DM me your address, and I will get the minis wherever they went. <laughs> out to you. Um, I might wait till after Christmas to mail them since everybody's mail system is severely overloaded, just FYI. But um, yeah, so a big thank you to everyone who is here for the ride. <laughs> for the crazy. Um, <laughs> yes. I know, that I feel like this episode is going to be like crazy long, but it is what it is. Sorry. Um, I crashed yeah. your episode. That's all right. <laughs> we hadn't done this in a while, so. No, it was time. Yes. Um, I don't know if you have any last. I may or may not publish another video before the end of the year. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I hope that everybody has a lovely holiday season. Merry Christmas. Uh, I think Hanukkah is over now. I think Hanukkah's or in is ongoing. I don't know. Sorry. I know. <laughs> um, whatever you celebrate, I hope that you have a lovely gathering with family and friends if you're doing. No, don't gather with family and friends. <laughs> whatever you do or don't celebrate, may it be merry and bright. And full of baked goods. Ooh, yes, I just made yes. cups, but I am going to go eat another one of. Yes. So, <laughs> all right, y'all. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Go stop by Naomi's channel. We will see, see you uh, again at some point. <laughs>